Hello everyone, this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game called Catherine on the PlayStation 3. It was also released on the Xbox 360, but the PS3 version is the one I happen to own. And you may not believe it, but this game was actually requested to me. So the person that requested this game to me is Gary Cormack. Now, one thing I will say before continuing on is that doing a request for a newer kind of game is actually a lot harder to do because, you know, there's only so much I can do. But thankfully, he requested me something that I happen to own, so therefore, it worked out perfectly. So anyways, let's continue. So this game was developed by Atlas, and it was also published by Atlas, although in the PAL region, it was published by Deep Silver. And it's a platforming puzzle game. So what you have to do is that you get to climb on top of blocks, moving blocks around, and make sure to get to the top without dying. Now I will explain a little bit more about the gameplay afterwards, but for now, let's go for the story first. So as soon as you start up the game, you start seeing all this like weird funky shit. It actually looks pretty cool, but really though, I have no idea what the hell this has to do with anything. But I'm sure you can tell that they obviously took some of these from famous movies. So after that, we start meeting this person named Trisha, who is the host of a thing called the Golden Playhouse. Kinda sounds like a porno if you ask me. Well anyway, she's pretty much being a host and making us watch TV. So it's almost like that we're playing a game of someone watching TV. Wow, now that's some crazy Inception shit right there. But now onto the main point, you use a character named Vincent Brooks who is an average worker who happens to be in a relationship but is not sure what to do within the relationship like he's either deciding to be just living as it is and just carefree or he's under pressure of wanting to marry her but is not sure what to do and the girl that he is in a relationship with is named Catherine, spelled with a K and then one day when Vincent goes to the bar with his buddies later on at night there is a blonde haired chick also named Catherine but spelled with a C who forces herself onto him and after when that happens when he goes home and goes to sleep he is in a nightmare world, and this is where the gameplay begins. So yes, in the nightmare world, all you have to do is keep on climbing up to the top of this tower of blocks. It kind of reminds me of like a hardcore version of Qbert. But after when you finish the first stage, you realize that everyone else in this area who's also having these weird dreams becomes sheep. And you are also a sheep too, but of course, as yourself, you don't see yourself as a sheep, but everyone sees you as a sheep, if that makes sense. So it's pretty much like a survival to the fittest, and if you die in the dream, you die in real life, because apparently in this real world, people have been dying in their sleep, and the reason why they're dying in their sleep is because of these weird nightmare worlds. But after when you wake up from the nightmare world, you go back to your normal daily life, well, sort of, because now you're in a really huge conundrum. Because Vincent thinks he cheated on K. Catherine with C. Catherine, because of that one night stand, so therefore you pretty much have to choose either between which Catherine you want to go for. Yeah, the fact that they gave him like the same name gets really confusing, that's why I just call them K Catherine and C Catherine because, you know, it's the easiest way to differentiate the two. So as the days go by, crazy shit starts happening and all that good stuff, and yeah, I'm gonna stop it right there because I don't want us to do any spoilers or anything like that, because this game is really story orientated. So if I give away like any of the endings of the game, well, you guys will probably not even play the game at all. So that's the basic of the story, and there's plenty of other things you can do in the game, so I'll explain a little bit on that. So other than controlling Vince in the Nightmare World, you also control him in the bar called the Stray Sheep. And this is where you get to talk to people, send text messages to either the Catherines, playing a mini-game of an arcade machine that pretty much is like an 8-bit version of the Nightmare World, but it has a different setting of um, Princess Rapunzel. Learn some basic backstory about different characters that walk into the bar. And one of the more amusing things that you can do within this game is drink alcohol and get drunk and learn about alcohol. Yes, so every time you finish your glass, the game will interrupt you and it'll tell you many different facts about random alcohol that you can drink. And the selections that you can get are beer, sake, whiskey, and cocktail. But I do find it to be really cool that they give you some random facts about each one. So here's an example. I know this is sudden, but here's some trivia for you, as you seem to have finished your glass. The name Rum and Cola is actually a nickname. Do you know the real name of this drink? It's called the Cuba Libre. The rum called for in this drink represents Cuba. This is a cocktail which mixed the national specialties of Cuba and the United States as a celebration of Cuba's independence. Cuba Libre means free Cuba. It tastes differently when you know the history. So that's pretty much most of the stuff that you get to do in the bar. Now as for the nightmare world, like I said, what you have to do is you have to get to the top of the tower while climbing up blocks without dying. 
Of course there's gonna be obstacles along the way like traps and such. You also gotta think really hard about certain movements that you have to do because if you take way too long, the floor at the bottom will start collapsing and you can get stuck. But after completing a stage, you'll go to a main level where you'll meet up with other sheep people. And you can talk to them and you get some pretty amusing conversations. Also, some of them are a lot nicer and give you some tips and advice. And there are some sheep that you may recognize that you will see from like the real world into this world. And then after that, it could be another stage of whatever else they're gonna throw at you. And at the end of each level, there's a boss stage, and man, some of these can be pretty tough. But you don't fight the boss directly, you just have to dodge your attacks and get to the end and surviving. And one thing I will say about a lot of the bosses within this game without spoiling anything is that a lot of them are pretty freaking fucked up. Just throwing that out there. So that basically sums up the gameplay and the story that I said earlier, and overall, I think it's very interesting and unique. And I never played or heard of any other game that played like this, so it's pretty much a breath of fresh air. But just so you guys know, this game is a lot more about story than the actual gameplay, but the gameplay is pretty simple and works enough as it is. So let's move on to other things, such as graphics. And I have to say, the graphics look alright. I think they look a little bit shell-shaded graphics, but you know what, I actually like that kind of graphics. I think they look pretty cool sometimes, but I think for a 2011 game, it just looks alright. But of course, nothing I can really complain about. Although the lip syncing doesn't really match up sometimes, but you know what, I don't really consider it to be like a huge complaint, so it's not really worth mentioning, but I guess I mentioned it now, so oh well. But really though, there's so many games that do that, I mean I would have to mention it like so many damn times. But either way, the graphics are fine as they are. Now as for the music in this game, the music is actually really damn good. I find it to be very well composed, and it has some remixes of other songs that are very familiar, like Beethoven and whatnot. So that's pretty neat. Also, if you go to the jukebox, you can change the music within the bar scenes, and you know what? They have songs from other Atlas games, such as Persona 3, Persona 4, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, and Digital Devil Saga, and all that good stuff. So that's pretty awesome that you get songs from other games that also have really awesome music. But you unlock more songs as you get more trophies within the game. Now I know a lot of people say that trophies are like really stupid and pointless, but you know what? In this game, it actually does something. So there you go. But overall, the music is really good and there's not much I can complain about. Now there is one really important thing that I do in my game reviews that I forgot to mention up until this point, and that is the controls. And yeah, I guess it really has been a while since I've been making videos, so this one's a little bit out of whack. But yeah, seriously, how the fuck can I forget to mention that? Anyways, the controls are really responsive and whatnot, it all works fine, then again, the game is fairly simple, so I mean, if you have an issue with the controls, then you probably shouldn't even pick up a controller anymore. But I will say that Vincent's walk cycle when he's sober, looks fucking depressing look, and when he's drunk, he looks pretty derpy, but in the kind of like, happy derpy way. I don't know how to explain it, but really though, he just looks like he's in his own little world. But anyways, the controls are fine as they are. Now as for the voice acting in this game, I have to say, the voice acting is really good. So the voice of Vincent Brooks is Troy Baker, and he does a damn good job at that, so I can't really complain. But then again, Troy Baker is a really good voice actor. Then you have Michelle Ruff as Kay Catherine. I think she does a really good job at it, so no complaints there. Then you have C. Catherine being played by Laura Bailey. I think she does a pretty decent job with her, but for me personally, she's probably my least favorite voice within this game. I mean, it's not terrible by any means, it's just I find compared to everyone else in the game, it's probably not my most favorite. And then Johnny is being played by Travis Willingham, who is one of Vincent's buddies, and I have to say, he does a really good job with his voice too. He's kind of like one of the more darker characters within the game, but he actually portrays that really well, so I give credit for that. Then there's Orlando, who is being played by Liam O'Brien. Now this guy is one of my favorite characters, and he's being voiced by one of my favorite voice actors, so really, that's just a win-win for me. And it's not just because of the fact that he has a cool hat, it's also because he says a lot of really funny shit. So really, he's like probably one of my favorite roles within the game. Then there is Toby, who is played by Yuri Lowenfall. Now Toby is one of those like annoying virgin characters, Kinda of reminds me of Yosuke from Persona 4, in fact he's also voiced by Yuri Lonefall, so pretty funny how that worked. But anyways, yeah, he does do a really good job betraying him, it's just, you know, he just gets kind of annoying after a while. But thankfully, he does man up by the end. And I know, I know, I said I was not gonna give away any spoilers, but come on, let's face it here, everyone knew that was gonna happen. 
But anyways, there are more characters with other good voice actors within the game, but I think you get the idea that the voice cast is really well done. Now, if you were to buy this game, it'd probably cost you about $20 give or take, maybe a little bit less than that. But I do see it pretty often, still new and used of course. But I'd say that's a really good price. Now as for the collector's edition, well that might cost you quite a lot, but then again, I don't even know the exact price on that, but let's just say maybe about like over 80. Now if I were to rate this game, I'd probably have to give it a 9 out of 10. Now you're probably thinking, don't you think it's a little bit too high and you're being too generous? Well, maybe a little bit. But for everything that this game has to offer, it does a really damn good job at that. Whether it comes to the storytelling, the gameplay is very simple and easy to pick up and play, but it's also really challenging. And of course the performance, such as like the music, the graphics, and the voice cast, and all that is really well done. Now I know this game is not going to be for everybody because, you know, there's a good chance that people might not be interested into like a really weird love story like this. Or the fact that there's like so much story but very little gameplay. Now I can understand these frustrations, but I have to say for what it has to offer, it does a damn good job at that. And I have a feeling this is going to be one of those games where I'll always remember it. It was just such a neat, cool experience that I've just never had before with a game. So I really gotta give it credit for its creativity and uniqueness. I swear it was a really awesome idea. So that pretty much sums up the game. So yes, I really like it a lot, and as I said before, it may not be for everyone, but it's at least worth giving it a try. So thanks Gary Cormack for the request, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and commenting, everyone.